Okay guys, I've got a, a bit more video. I've been mucking around with the um, uh, with the procedural generation thing and I got a bit bored and I started pulling in some extra or some stuff from it that I've already developed uh, just to make up a little mock-up scene so we can see roughly what it's going to look like and it does look pretty cool, I think. I mean, I hope so. I think it looks cool. So in this scene we've got a player ship, we've got uh, two escort ships and then we've got four uh, enemy ships and the only difference between any of these is their label colour on the map icons. Um, in fact I guess one thing I should probably do is add a, a map icon to my ship right? Yeah whatever we'll be an alert so I think if I set that to white so if we play the scene now, hang on, let me just drop my uh, profiling window out of the way. Whoa, oh, I'm paused and I suppose not working. So we have two escorts, Escort Alpha and Escort Beta. And if I zoom out even more, we've got the enemies. For some reason the asteroid logos are now black. Ah, sorry, bear with me. I know what this is. I'm not setting a default color, so the asteroids are coming out with a are coming <laughs> are coming out with a transparent thing. Uh, label color is going to be like a brown. Cool. Okay. Let me save my scene up. Maximize and play. Don't show the stats. Go. So yeah, I've just been like kind of mucking around this morning. So right, we've got asteroid labels. If I zoom out, we've got a commander. I haven't got a label for, I haven't got like a ship icon yet. These are just little alert, like exclamation marks. So if we scroll out a bit more, we can see the enemy contacts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start escaping towards one of these asteroids. So if I click on that and supposed to go to, you'll see the ship will start turning. And my two escort guys will follow me as well. So the HUD, not quite sure on that yet. Uh, that's going to have. I'm, I'm in two minds. One is to have like the HUD stuff around the outside of the screen statically, and one is to have it following around like that. It will probably be a mix between the two. At the moment, I've got this target button up here, and the idea is when you're locked onto something, it will show the target information on the HUD so you have to rotate the view and look at it. Uh, I think that might be a little bit too cluttered. So my other idea is to have buttons along the top, one, two, three, and four, and same buttons on the keyboard and they go towards switching the um, switching the views around. So like button one is this view, button two takes you to like a, an inventory view or something, button three goes to the weapon manager, something like that. Uh, so a couple of other things to probably that you'll probably notice is my ships are all twitching. This was a problem that I never solved with the navigation thing. So my navigator bounces backwards and forwards like this, and I think it's because it's setting two different positions in the same frame, which is weird. So that I need to fix. But my escort ships following us nicely. The enemies are obviously making their way in. What I would be doing now if this was uh, if this was working is I would be right clicking on these, these don't have a right click action at the moment, right click target and that would start targeting things, it would share the targeting options to the friendly AIs. Let's go to a, a different asteroid, let's uh, continue escaping, we must escape. Um, so the other thing I want to add to this is ranges on these. Um, at the moment none of these have any, any range on them. The other thing I want to do is a key up here so it will list all of the contacts on the uh, that's, that are available. Um, yeah. So actually actually one thing you can see here is I've got some weird ghosting thing. When uh, I don't know what that is. I, actually what it is is when, when these go outside of range they get deleted from the game view like they get deleted from the game but the icon doesn't get deleted so I need to add in like a a thing to delete them let me see if I can catch one at it that one's going out of range so eventually that 
this asteroid back here should disappear. And uh, there we go. And now, yeah, and now its logo and now its icon is stuck. So that's what that is. Good, brilliant. That's been bugging me for like uh, a couple of hours. Yeah, okay, so where are we? How are we getting to this? We're getting towards this asteroid here. So this is uh, this is where we're at. There's a few other things that I've got turned off at the moment. One is there's a, a grid that, if I actually pause the game and turn that back on, uh, if I turn on the map, uh, somewhere in here is a grid. Yeah, the player grid. This is causing really interesting problems because it is. Uh, the reason I had the profiler open a second ago is it produces this really nice grid. Scroll out. There we go. So it produces this nice grid in the game world, which I, you know, I think is great. Uh, but it is causing serious lag, um, like. 30 to 40 milliseconds of frame time is spent drawing this grid. So what I'm actually going to do is it's going to be cheaper just to make this into a texture and then have a, a um, see, see how twitchy that is. So some of that twitchiness is down to the um, the navigator being wafty and the other twist twitchiness is the fact that it's spending almost an entire frame drawing the grid every frame. Um, yeah, so there's loads of little bits to do. I, I like the grid. Um, I think that adds, it like gets the scale right because now you can see that that is uh, uh, like a, a one kilometer. Uh, actually, I think it's these are 500 meters. So it actually works with like you know getting the ranges right so you can quickly see what the range things are at. Um, the other thing this needs to do is project up onto the grid the uh, like whereabouts things are, and that's all going to be like a uh, there'll be cock keys to toggle that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at. There's a few other things I, I'm wondering. Uh, I think what would be quite cool is uh, having little dots after these so that you can track where they're coming from in this view. Uh, those will just be game objects added to the GUI. Um, so in fact yeah I, I'm kind of I'm running out of steam on things so I'm going to do that. Um, the skybox is nerfed. I know that the skybox is wrong. That's just uh, uh, me being lazy. The actual like kind of sky sphere thing that makes sense and it's all at the right angle is part of the map like the large map system which I haven't got added in yet. So I think what I want to do is uh, I've only got about half an hour or so to play with this so I'm just going to quickly go in now, add in the little dots to follow things just to make it look nice and then we'll be back in a second and then you can see that. Okay. See you in a second. Okay, so here we are. Got map lips. Uh, I thought I had added in a um, a thing to remove these ghosting, the on destroy um, function. That hasn't seemed to work, so I need to look into that. 
So basically what these are doing, as you saw in the code there, is every there's a coroutine that every two seconds moves uh, one of these blips and puts it at the position of the ship, right? Uh, or the position of the icon, sorry. So with uh, like with these guys, every two seconds it's taking the rear one and putting it at the front, and then there's twenty of these. Um, oh, sorry, there's ten of these things per per map object. The asteroids do have them, but they don't. Uh, that's turned off. If, uh, if we uh, give me that minimize. So as you can see uh, here we've got this track blips option that's turned off. If I turn that on, nothing will happen. Uh, if I turn that on, it will throw shitloads of errors because <laughs> it's not. It doesn't create all of those data structures at runtime. It creates um, when the object gets created. Uh, when, when the game object starts, when it calls it start function, it creates all of those. So I'm kind of thinking that uh, two seconds is maybe too quick, so if I go back to the code, if I change that to say five seconds, uh, as you can see here, if we're tracking blips, we're creating the, uh, some arrays to hold game objects and vectors for the wall position of the blips. We're then going through and instantiating all of those, setting the label, setting the colors and all that sort of stuff, and putting them on a position that's off the screen. And then in, uh, we've got this update blips coroutine, which is running in the background, and that basically goes forever, gets the, the current blip i, sets its well position, uh, increments i, so it wraps around to the front of the array if it goes over the array length, and uh, waits for blip space seconds. And then here in our uh, update, We've got this uh, this dot product between uh, the camera forward vector and heading. If it's greater than zero, that means that the object is behind the camera. Uh, uh, sorry, is is in front of the camera. So we're updating its position on the screen. And if it's behind the camera, then it will go off and hide it. Uh, and we're doing that by setting the button to false, uh, setting the button action to false. Uh, and setting its position to minus 1000, minus 1000, zero. And then it's going through, iterating through all of the blips and doing the same thing so it shifts them all off of the screen when you when you rotate the camera away so it's not facing. So with that, if we go back to here, click play. Um, uh, is moving so now this apart from the judderiness which is just annoying every five seconds now it should be placing a map a blip one two three four five one two three four five yeah I count fast okay so that isn't doing better tracks now so I think this would probably be um, this blip function will probably actually be added to uh, like the the player's radar um, settings because one of the, one of the things I want to have is that if you kit out your ship with like radar modules, you can uh, s get better detection rates and all that sort of stuff. Um, so one thing is if you've got directional radar scanning these guys, you'll get better position estimates and uh, and better information from them. Uh, but yeah, right now I'm, I'm quite happy with that. That's, uh, uh, starting to look like how I like how I imagined it to look. So there's still a load of things. This is basically all happening in the, the uh, in the zoom level from. Um, uh, like regular zoom level all the way out to tactical zoom level. Um, when you scroll further, obviously I'm scrolling the mouse wheel now, it doesn't go any further. Uh, what will eventually happen is that will then continue scrolling out to like the planetary and the, the system si size level. So yeah, the other thing I need to do is uh, obviously spawn these guys on demand. Uh, these guys don't have any AI other than follow the player. So if I go to another place. So yeah, at the moment, all of these just follow the player around. And 
actually if I do a, a full 180. So it doesn't really do anything. Um, what else? Uh, I guess something I've just noticed up here is that the uh, the alpha channel of the icons changes based on distance, um, but not for the blips. So maybe I should set that as well. But yeah. Also the. I think the, the, the alpha channel for the blips should um, change based on how far the camera is away. Uh, so that like when you're zooming in like this, it shouldn't really show them because they just look a bit weird. I need to fix that, figure out what that is, that's weird. Anyway, so that's where I'm at. It's starting to look a little bit more like what I expected it to look like. Like, you know, in my, in my mind, this is kind of the the, the kind of the gameplay view. So uh, I'm not, I don't like that. This, like in my head, was a much better idea than uh, than it is. I'm, I'm now, now that I've sat and played this for a while, I'm now leaning towards having the buttons around the outside. So I'll probably uh, mock something that, like that up and uh, we can take a look at that. I'll fix this ghosting issue, that's weird. And then the next thing is to pull all of this near local procedural generated stuff into the big global map view which is going to look a lot different. Uh, then what we're going to have with like far away things like if I went and clicked on like Jupiter in the distance we'd have a warp to option and what that would do is that would engage the uh, the inertial um, the inertial suppression drive and fire you at Jupiter at a very Fairly good speed, fraction of the speed of light. So I like that. This is, I'm happy. I, I, this is, this is starting to look a bit more like a game and less like a big pile of crap. So, yeah. Maybe I should, uh, yeah, I should go through and modify the uh, the alpha of these as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Rock on.